I'm Nina Pfefferman. I am an assistant research professor at DIMAX, which is the Center for Discrete Mathematics and Theoretical Computer Science at Rutgers University. I am also uh, about to be an assistant professor in the Ecology, Evolution, and Natural Resources Department, also here at Rutgers. I'm also an adjunct assistant professor at the Tufts University School of Medicine, New England Medical Center, co-director of the Tufts University Initiative for the Forecasting and Modeling of Infectious Diseases. As a kid, I really loved science. I had no idea which branch of science I wanted to go into. I wasn't so enthused about math. I didn't like math at all until I hit college. And the only reason I ended up majoring in math at college is that it had untimed exams at the end of, of the class. And so I signed up for a couple of classes my freshman year thinking that uh, I would just keep taking math because I always, always had and I wasn't particularly good at it and I wasn't particularly thrilled about it. And I would take biology because I might be thrilled about it and I knew that I, I thought I wanted to do some science. And I instantly had two bad experiences and a good experience. Uh, my two bad experiences were in molecular biology and linear algebra. And both of those courses, I really I didn't, wasn't so happy. I didn't click well. The professor and I didn't see eye to eye as to where my interests would be with the class. And I went to talk to both professors. And both of them were unenthused about the prospect of me joining the field as a researcher. And then I took a class in epsilons and deltas for multivariable calculus. And the professor and I clicked instantly. And it, this was also, I think, maybe crucially for me, the first woman professor I'd had in math, Elmwood Burchard. And she was fantastic. And she incorporated into her class an understanding, even at that lower level, uh, for undergraduates an idea of what proof systems could be like and how it can be just so much fun and an act of discovery in mathematics. And she was very supportive and she had, had mentioned to me also that if I liked biology she had done some work in mathematical biology herself and even though that was never something that I picked up on from her it, it sort of opened my, my mind to the possibility that that could be a future career path someday for me. And she just made that class so much fun that I kept taking more math. Um, my family is entirely mathematicians, so it's actually odd to me that that experience shaped my understanding so much of what it would be because I grew up with an idea that math was a beautiful subject and that math was something that I could definitely consider as a career path, but it just hadn't spoken to me yet as a field. I hadn't enjoyed it until that experience, and I really just loved that experience so much that even despite also having the negative experience with the linear algebra class, uh, I took more of it and discovered I really loved it and then um, let the biology go entirely when I took a class in the computer science department as an undergraduate for applied mathematics and cryptography and, and security. And the professors who taught that were just so amazing and I had such a good time that I actually stopped doing really almost any biology and pursued uh, my, the rest of my undergraduate degree and then my master's degree, um, which was to have been my PhD in pure math with an eye towards applying it to cryptography. And then I got to my PhD program and realized I really wasn't enjoying it that much. And the emphasis on pure as opposed to applied mathematics in the program that I went to just wasn't a good fit. And my personality wasn't a good fit. Um, and I think that's, that's advice I'd like to give anyone considering which field they'd like to go into, especially in academia. Different fields have different personalities. And it's, I think, just as valid as saying you're interested in a problem as to say you'd be interested in collaborating with the other researchers in that field. And if you don't feel comfortable with them, and if they don't feel comfortable with you, that can be a valid reason to look around for other options. And I just was miserable, and I wasn't doing that well, I think partially because I was miserable, but also partially because I wasn't interested in the questions that were being asked. And I just decided, that's it, I'm leaving. And uh, instead of getting a PhD, I switched to a master's and left. Uh, and I taught high school for a year. And it gave me time to really reflect on what it was that, uh, about the academic experience that I did like and didn't like. And I knew I wanted to go back and do some kind of research. And I had moved to a new city to follow my husband. And uh, luckily, that city for me was Boston, which had all sorts of opportunities of uh, different universities that I could talk to in different departments. And given the the coursework that I'd taken as an undergraduate, um, I knew I had a lot of different opportunities and I could pursue a graduate degree in a number of different fields. And I decided that the main thing that hadn't worked for me the first time in graduate school was the relationship I had with my advisor. And so instead of picking my question or my field the next time around, 
I really did just call out of the blue a whole bunch of, of researchers at the universities around Boston where I was living and say, you know what, what would it be like to work with you as a person? What kinds of questions do you ask? Will I get along with you? Will I be able to learn from you effectively how to be a researcher in your field? Much more than what's the question you're asking and do I like that question? And I decided that that was a much bigger draw for me and that I could be interested in a large number of questions as long as I was learning from someone who really excited me. And I was really lucky. I, I found the world's best thesis advisor and uh, he remains an amazing mentor to me to this day and I would recommend that anyone thinking of graduate school uh, if they feel as though an emotional connection and a good working relationship is going to help them shape how successful they become I would recommend calling before you decide where to go call the person you want to work with talk to them go meet them if you can um, just see what what you think it would be like to interact with them on a daily basis and to rely on them for advice in your field and for a uh, sort of almost a parental relationship where they introduce you to what it's like to be a researcher and help you grow into that.